Yo, what's good? It's your boy back at it again, Ulhadnar. Today I'm gonna show you my build I use in Empyrean Forge M10 against humans. We are using Hatchet and uh, Spear here. My attribute 65 constitution because my gear doesn't allow me to go lower. I would love, love to go as low as 5 constitution like my other PvE builds, but I had to get a kind of like budget setup, if you will. I'll show, show you that in a second. But if you're running with the randoms, you can go 100 constitution. The mobs in this expedition are squishier than, let's say, in Lazarus. That was last week's expedition. So we can go more on the survival, uh, surviving side, more health, more con. Uh, you go with 200 decks as a baseline, as a default, because of this perk bonus backstab. And then rest points in strength, because this is our main scaler for Hatchet. And Hatchet is, uh, is our main DPS weapon, not only because you can get an absolute biss as a drop in this dungeon. So you don't have to spend any gold on, on the weapon. But uh, humans are also weak to Slash, which is our Hatchet. Now we get Weapon Mastery for Hatchet. Uh, the classic standard full berserk tree. Now there are two ways to build around the Hatchet. We go Raining Throw and Raging Torrent. Um, you could switch Raging Torrent for Infected Throw and go even the upgraded version here. Because there are mobs, the Menders or Priests, Mages that heal. So this would come in handy. I was using a Raging Torrent because we didn't really have a problem with that. But if you're in a group where your team members don't focus on the healer, yeah, you might want to go with the uh, Infected Throw. Running through the classic, aim it throw for the last boss. Also another thing, you, you, uh, why you want to go for Infected Throw maybe is for the last boss, because there are situations quite often where you just stand on the platform and nowhere to hit him in melee range, so you just throw hatches at him. Last boss is very, very un-melee friendly, but that's what makes it so fun. Now, Defy Death, if you want to stay on the safe side, or for more damage, which is much better, you go with the uh, Persistent Hindrance. But Defy Death is still a clutch, and, you know, a dead DPS doesn't do any DPS, so I always like to go with this one. Might try to go with the Hindrance, but once again, the mobs are squishier. We didn't really run in problems when it comes to damage. Maybe against last boss, but then again, there are so many encounters and mechanics that Defy Death can save you a uh, common clutch. With Spear, pretty straightforward, we got Skewer for the bleed and for the weapon perk we have on the Spear itself that applies Weaken. Perforate to apply all three debuffs, we got Rent, we got Weaken here as well. And it is, this, this skill right here is just an absolute of a beast. Uh, you will also get Fortify if you have the perk for it on the gear, but I don't have it because Fortify got changed to Armor Rating and no damage absorption. The third skill is Sweep, amazing for CC and also for the damage. It really does a lot of damage with this one, Coupe de Grace. The Grace, excuse me, whatever the pronunciation is. But Sweep is very good in synergy with Great Dex users if they use Gravity well. You want to Sweep right after that and then Perforate. I will show in a second the combo. Stamina on the crate for more dodging if uh, there are encounters, so you need to dodge iframe. More damage to knock down targets once again, you know, goes well with Sweep and Perforate. Now, when it comes to gear, uh, we are running light, obviously, but though this gear might be a shocker. You might, you guys might be expecting an absolute bisque, just like my other videos for PvP and PvE. But I'm basically using one perk items as my armor. So this headpiece drops in the dungeon, comes in free, right? Refreshing the human ward is the two perk you want to look for. Or, instead of refreshing, you want to go for a weapon perk, just like Bleeding Sweep. So this is the only item that I crafted. Uh, rolled Human Ward, Bleeding Sweep, I locked those with Golden Scarab. Resilient was the random third perk, but Bleeding Sweep is the only weapon perk you would want to get because we get Skewer on the uh, Spear itself. For a Hatchet, don't need anything. You can go with Revision Torrent, but after it's nerfed, it's not as good. So, that's, those are my boots. I'm running Ice Gems because it's Ice Mutated Dungeon. Now, my pants here are indestructible. This can save you some gold, but, you know, that's a one perk item. My gloves, same story. Explosive arrow, we don't use bow, so pretty useless. Chest piece, resilient, absolutely useless in PvE. And the headpiece, you know, human board, refreshing. This is the only decent piece. And we are cleaning. I was able to clean a lot of uh, gold runs in uh, this forge, even if randoms. So you definitely don't need, you never even need it more than ward itself for mutations back when mutation came out before they got uh, nerfed uh, because they were pretty pretty uh, hard to you know hard to clear back then because mobs were strong we were not even running any wards and we still got gold runs some of those videos are still on my channel over a year ago you can check them out yeah so this is my armor 
my amulet, the classic, you're looking for two perk, which is health and then the protection for the uh, weak's mutation. So we got uh, ice, we got frozen protection here. Now I also have second amulet that I switch for the bosses, first and second boss, which is the last one Marius. With flame protection, comes in very handy. With fire, uh, fire absorption, because the bosses are fire. We got this ring with any feeling and keen awareness, doesn't, uh, doesn't hurt. I believe that first boss doesn't have uh, like a back attack, a backstep attack, just like uh, Scylla in Lazarus. So Kina Vernis comes in handy. Hardy, not really needed because we're already 150 decks. But infield bling, you know, with the weekend, goes super well with Rend, with Perfrade as well. If you get infected throw, even more so. You would want to get slash damage on this ring. I also have Legate's ring, so I might be running that one instead. But I had this one, so I said why not. This uh, earring, I, I forgot what this one drops. I have no clue. But what you're looking for is the uh, threat reduction, either evasive or the other one that I absolutely forgot about how it's called. But there is one that produces a permanent uh, threat for you. But since we're sometimes dodging a lot, as you can see my gambit in the hatchet, because I'm used to dodging, uh, you know, I have this active almost nonstop. So this eases the pain of a tank keeping aggro. Now, Refreshing Toast is the mandatory one you're looking for here as well, the potion cooldown. Then the third one, if you can get your hands on Legendary, would be either Regenerating or Purifying Toast, which can dispel some of the debuffs. I have Nimble because this is what it, what comes with the named item. Nimble is really useless here. We don't need it at all. That, so it's like a two-per uh, earring right here. Now for the weapon, Hatchet drops in this expedition an M9+, plus, I believe, Rough Hauser. I will leave a link to this item in the description in the pinned comment. So you can take a look where uh, or when it drops. So this is Rogue, Human Bane, Kill and Power, Absolute Holy Trinity, Absolute Busy you can get for a DPS weapon. Not much to say here. For Spear, uh, you would want Bane on a Spear with Skewer, that like, that's like the, the the best two per Spear, but since I got Chain on top of that, that's in our damage, this is far better than the Bane and the Skewer itself. The best Spear itself would be Attunement, Bane and Skewer, but almost impossible to get. For the gems here, I'm running Diamond because the Ice uh, mutation, you don't really take that much damage, you're almost at full HP, especially on bosses. Same would be uh, for Hatchet as well, but your top DPS gems would be either Gambit, aka Opal, or Diamond. Now, some people think that humans are weak to Ice. No, they are not. They are not weak to any elemental damage, so just stick with this, these two. But even if they were too weak to any elemental, you would still deal more damage with these gems. When it comes to Heart Rune, we get like three options here. Mm, we got this uh, Brutal Wines, which is a mandatory one in a group. At least one person should have that, or only one person should have that, in my opinion. It applies another Weaken on the targets, AoE Weaken, actually. And then a Rent on top of that as well, which is 20% damage, or sorry, targets armor reduction. Parries well once again with Perfrate and Skiver. Like, this Heart Room is a absolute synergy with our Spear here. Even more so if you have Infected Throw, which applies another Weaken. Another option is to go with a Firestorm rune that applies also weaken, AoE weaken, but also gives your allies empower, as you can see in the description, 10% empower for 6 seconds. You can go with this one, damaging one, or you can go with the one that uh, cleanses dots right here, but it's nothing that crazy. Your third option would be a Brutal Detonate for the DPS output damage. But if anything, I really, really like Grasping Vines or Firestorm. They're my go-to because no one really uses those. When it comes to consumables, uh, you, want, you might want to get yourself Fire Protection Potions right here. Because this is a absorption, not armor rating. Where Gemstone Dust, even though it says Elemental Damage Absorption, this actually increases Elemental Armor. So its value is much decreased. It doesn't absorb as much as before patch. But you wouldn't want to uh, get this for mobs or like big AoE pools for mobs. Classic potions here, regen potion, and then hearty meal for another HP regen if you're behind LOS or you need to heal up, heal yourself up. Then we got uh, the coating for human ward right here, more damage. Honing stone for even more damage right here. And then stat food, I use full harvest turkey because this one is pretty cheap. Now, this was all the gear and whatnot. Also, another very good perk on bags. This is kind of like a luxury thing to get, I think. Quality of life. 
Plastic consumption is gonna save you gold in the long run quite a lot because it makes your food, honing stone and ward potions last longer. You can also get yourself human ward potions, which I don't have, I think. Oh, there we go, right here. If you're struggling with uh, surviving, you go with, uh, we get a suiciding tank that goes with humongous pools, you can go with that. But our rotation is, um, if you have a great excuser in the group, which you should, you wait for the gravity well, you follow with sweep, you go with perf rain, and after that you go with skiver. After we use, after we use skiver, we switch to hatchet, and we go with the uh, berserk and left clicks. I like to do three left clicks and then uh, dodge, because uh, if you're in big pools, you're very uh, likely to get hit by something, even if you're in behind, the, even if you're in the back of the mobs. There's always some straight dogs in the back, but uh, there is one way to. There is many ways to cancel animation on Berserk, which will save you a one hit, aka increased damage, DPS increase right there. So if you use a skill from your weapon, you can animation cancel Berserk just like that. What I just did is use Skiver, and after that, I literally just pressed uh, the swap weapon keybind into Berserk and left click at the same time. So it was Berserk left click at the same time, and it was already used. It's one way to cancel animation. The second way, you can cancel animation Berserk with your skill, which is Raging Torrent. If you're running a Infected Throw with Running Throw, you can cancel Berserk with left click, like that. So basically the same, like Weapon Swap, or then with the skill. I also have a video for Berserk animation cancel, which I will show in the right upper corner right here. Some of you have already seen it. So there are three ways to cancel it. Also, if you're a CC, aka Stunt, you can cancel Berserk animation as well. With the classic, just berserk and left click at the same time, and nothing else. I believe that was it. Don't forget your topaz potions as well. If you go for mutations, this is something I uh, forget almost every single time, even though I have it in my backpack. But yeah, uh, another very good and useful perk for this dungeon, which would be actually an absolute biss, would be human ward and flame conditioning. Or at least have that second set. If you are really min maxing and you can afford it, Go with the second set, Human Ward and Flame Conditioning for bosses at least. It will help you tremendously on the last boss, especially Marius. Because things can get really out of hand on the, on the last boss. But I would like to wrap things up here. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I appreciate you here. If you like the content, please uh, consider subscribing or giving thumbs, thumbs up. Or even commenting uh, in the comment section down below because it would trigger the YouTube algo gods, algorithm gods. And uh, until then, y'all have a good one. Talk to you soon and take it easy. Bye.